Hello and welcome to my guide about siege weapons on Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to show you how to set them up, how to operate them, I'm going to guide you through the differences between catapults and ballistas, and I'm going to show you a couple of useful builds and ideas how to use them in your own fortress. So let's get started with the fundamentals, how to set up and build these things. You will require a siege workshop, and at the siege workshop we make parts for each of these weapons. The parts are made out of logs and you require three parts per weapon, so that makes three logs per siege weapon. Once you have created them, you can set them up via the military tab, you find them there. Catapults are loaded with stones, so your mining debris can be used as ammunition there, and ballistas require arrows that needs to that need to be crafted first. You make a arrowhead at the forge. So you find them over here in the siege equipment tab. You select the material to be used and after you have an arrowhead, you can then assemble yet another log and a arrowhead into a arrow. So you can also make these ballista arrows out of wood alone, but I'd highly re recommend you not to because the damage difference between a metal tipped one and a wooden one is insane. It goes so far that against well equipped people, wooden bolts won't do any good for you. Alright, that being said, that's how we make the parts. When we set them up, a catapult and a ballista, both of both of them are three on three, so they are relatively large. When we click them, we can select their facing, and the facing is also showing the area or the direction of fire. Each of these is 90 degree wide and the optimal shot will always be a straight line. So it's always from the center of your siege weapon, straight line ideally. We have three modes of operation, not in use, prepare to fire, then a dwarf will load that thing and stand right next to it and wait for an order to fire and fire at will, your dwarf will load that thing and fire as soon as it is loaded. And so when we use this, keep in mind that they will fire even if there is no target around. Also worth mentioning here, the quality of the catapult parts is influencing the reload speed of your catapult. So the higher the quality, the faster the catapult slash ballista. The other influencing factor in reload speed is the skill level of the siege operator. Siege operators are found in the area down here. These are the people that operate these weapons. So let's talk about siege operators a bit. So whenever you put a dwarf there, as I said, they'll try to fire a straight line. That's what a legendary siege operator will do. Any siege operator which skills worse will deviate from, from that straight line. So you get something around the 90 degree cone there. So to have accurate shooters, you will require training. That's the nutshell in it. What's also worth mentioning, your siege operators are civilians. That means if enemies get too close, too close is roughly 10 grids then your siege operators will be afraid and run away. So plan your weapons accordingly. Range-wise, these things are quite insane. Catapults, though, have a minimum range of 30 grids. So catapults, you cannot use them if the target is below 30 grids distance. And maximum distance-wise, the catapult is ranging somewhere around 100 to 150 grids, and the ballista is ranging... 150 to 200 grids. Most of the time these arrows will just fly off the map. What's also really really important, a catapult will never hurt a friendly entity. A ballista does hurt any entity. So if we fire these things and somebody friendly is in the way, they'll die. Also the damage of a catapult is much much lower than the one of a ballista, but more about that in a second. I just want to go through the basics. So another important thing to note, these things can fire through fortifications. So you can and should build your siege weapons in a way that your siege operators can fire through the fortifications. This gives them also cover and it also blocks off baddies. So a last thing before we go into the specialized part of this video, where we talk about the catapults and the ballistas in specific, you will find the ammo for 
ballistas in the furniture area here siege ammo that's the uh, that that's where you can configure them just so you can make a stack of ammo easier in the vicinity of your ballistas which i highly recommend you to all right so now we know about the basics it's really important to summarize here at that point you will need well-trained siege operators Siege weapons are nigh useless without skilled siege operators out of two reasons, inaccuracy and slowness. So you will want to train your siege operators. And basically, in a nutshell, the catapult is the best way to do that. Two reasons. It uses debris that falls off your mining ops anyways. And it is, in terms of damage, sadly so inferior compared to the ballista that you wouldn't want to use them in most scenarios anyways for your defense. I say most because I don't want to give you the impression that there are any iron rules or anything. No, no. You can make funny things with the catapults as well, but ballistas are way more deadly. Alright, with that being said, let's get downstairs where I can show you a nice training range for catapults. So, this is a area where we work. And here I want to show you a couple of nice things to know about siege weapons. First off, siege weapons never traverse height levels. You always shoot on a straight line, so you can perfectly build underground. Also, if a projectile smacks the wall and stays on the same height level, it's destroyed. If the projectile smacks the wall and drops them one height level down, it gets preserved. So this means we can do something like this. Down here I have this catapult and it'll fire here against the wall. The shot will be caught and the projectile can then be extracted from this. But as you see there, the shot went into the wall and got destroyed. So that's how a bad siege operator will work. But in theory, you can make this thing work really, really nicely as a training mill for your or your siege operator, sadly I don't have the parts right now, and you can put two catapults on uh, vice versa, vice versa on uh, each side. Due to the fact that catapults never hurt friendly entities, you'll have a shot, 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 shot situation, and that eventually, when your siege operators will get better, will lead to a pretty optimal training situation. So catapults are really mostly ideal for training purposes in my humble opinion. Due to the fact that their ammo is uh, dirty heavy as well, you'll have a lot of trouble with hauling the ammo to the battlefield in time. And well, they make really, really good training machines. If bonus points for you, if you can use them, in a skilled way for defense uh, manners, but don't don't hound yourself if you if you prefer ballistas. So let's talk about ballistas. Ballistas are, like I said, the more deadly version of siege weapons. But just like the catapults, they have the same problems. They can only fire in a straight line. They deviate their path a lot, and the problem with this, uh, it kills even friendly entities, is a really, really big problem. So this is one setup that you can use. We have here three ballistas staggered in a line. This one fires down this hallway, down this hallway, down this hallway. I have confined the space to only three grids. So if you have somewhat skilled siege personnel, they will hit a lot of enemies there. I also put a little bit of a channel on the end of this because this way every arrow that should not hit will be catched here in this uh let's call it an arrow sieve where you can pick up all those precious arrows that didn't get uh, their chance to kill somebody so by confining the area that where your enemies can pour towards you you can really increase the efficiency of these weapons. Also worth mentioning, ballistas can pierce several entities in one shot. So according to the Wikipedia, you can pierce up to five to six goblin-sized enemies before the arrow runs out. The catapult is only hitting one enemy at, at any given time. So this kind of setup is very, very crude. You could, of course, make it more more useful in this regard. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an impression how I could do it. Also, really important little tip here. 
you have the uh, traffic area designators here and you can tell your dwarfs to avoid certain areas. This, of course, well, you can't really forbid him to, but uh, this lowers the chance of uh, accidents during a siege. But all in all, this is what, how they work, and I don't think that I missed any two important things. If you think that something is really important that I missed, please add it into the comments, or if you have any cool ideas what to do with these siege weapons, feel free to ask away. I want to note here, if you just uh, fire at will with a catapult out there, it'll try to hunt animals, just so you know. It's a fun part, and uh, siege weapons are really cool. You just, make to, you just have to work your way around their problems to make them really effective, otherwise they are they're going to be more of a problem for you than a benefit. And keep in mind, catapults training and ballistas are for killing. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to drop me your comments like I said down there. A thumbs up on that video would be deeply appreciated. It makes it more visible for everybody. And of course, consider subscribing. There's also a playlist link in the description box leading to the entirety of my Dwarf Fortress tutorial videos that I made. You might want to check them out as well. And at this point, again, a big shout out to the supporters of this channel. I really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. And there's a couple of links in the description box that you might want to check out if you want to join the supporters. If that's not possible for you, don't worry though. I really, really don't mind. I'm really happy that you're still hanging around. Watching this video to this point is really amazing. And it supports the channel too. So have a wonderful day and see you soon.